photosynthesis is taught in our schools and universities. But look how this group of MIT and Harvard graduates answered a very simple question. Here's a seed. Okay. Okay. Now hold on to that for a second. Okay. Imagine that I planted that in the ground. Okay. And a tree grew. All right. And here is a piece of that tree. Sure. Okay. Now where did all that stuff come from? Well, uh, you mean where did the mass come from? The added mass that this is now a much larger, heavier tree, and this is a very small seed. Uh, the mass came from a lot of things, I guess. I guess from water that it sucked up from the ground. I would guess from minerals that it sucked up from the ground. This came from the ground, uh, the air, water, all of it came together and grew very slowly. Water, light, soil. Essentially the mass for this. Nutrients from the soil, essentially. It seems that they don't consume food like, like we do. Yeah, what would you say to someone who said to you that the weight of the tree is mostly from the carbon dioxide in the air? Really? I would wonder about that. <laughs> I would wonder how that's possible. I would disagree because this same volume of air wouldn't weigh this much unless it was highly compressed. What would you say to someone who told you that the weight of the tree came mostly from the carbon dioxide in the air. I said that's very disturbing and um, wonder how that could happen. We made this video to help you understand how plants make themselves out of thin air. Our story begins with carbon dioxide. This is a molecule made up of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms bonded together like so. We call this CO2. It's a gas in our atmosphere. Our bodies exhale CO2 with every breath. CO2 is also released when petroleum, coal, and other fossil fuels are burned, and this is a leading cause of global warming. But this is another story. Our story goes like this. Once upon a time, a simple CO2 molecule spent her days dancing in the wind. She was happy and carefree, but always had the feeling that something was missing in her life. She wanted to be part of something bigger. One day, she finds herself in front of a huge opening. It looks somehow familiar, as if from a past lifetime. Drawn inside by curiosity and by something else, she passes through wide channels and tunnels. She crawls through a small hole in the wall to find a giant capsule, the chloroplast, which seems to glow with green light. Slipping through a porthole exactly her size, she finds herself in a crowded world, full of massive machines and other small molecules that look something like her, but they are stuck together in funny ways and shaped differently. Suddenly, our innocent CO2 molecule is grabbed by a giant machine named Rubisco. Before she knows what's happening, Rubisco glues her to one of these other strange molecules called Ruby P. Ruby P is a string of five carbons with odd caps called phosphates at each end. She tries to pull away, but instead, Ruby P splits into two, and she sees to her amazement that she's still stuck to one of the Ruby P fragments. It is confusing because now there are two identical molecules, each with three carbons and one phosphate cap. They are like identical twins and are known as 3PGA. Another machine grabs her and stamps a new phosphate cap onto one of her oxygens. Ooh, that felt good. She sees the same thing happen to her identical twin, the other 3PGA. It dawns on her that she is now part of an assembly line, going who knows where. In the next step, the phosphate cap is pulled off her rear end. But hey, the phosphate steals one of her oxygens, and a couple little hydrogen atoms are stuck on. She's become something altogether different, something bigger, sleeker, and full of energy. The assembly line ahead splits. The bigger pathway, where most of the traffic is going, merges and splits, merges and splits. At each step along the way, the molecules are joined, split and capped, until every molecule is transformed into an identical ruby P. The smaller pathway is very different. Here, she sees that molecules are joined together to form rings, and then these are rearranged to make all kinds of beautiful new molecules. 
Some are long chains of rings, which we call starch and cellulose. Some are short chains where the oxygens have been replaced with hydrogens, just like on her rear end. These are oils and lipids. Some are combined with nitrogen atoms to make something very different, amino acids, which are combined like Lego blocks to make all kinds of large proteins. Suddenly, it dawns on her. All these strange and complex molecules started out just like her. They were once freely dancing in the wind, and now they are part of a giant complex that makes CO2 molecules into something bigger. So now you know where the mass comes from when a tiny seed grows into a giant tree. But wait, you say, what about the photo part of photosynthesis? This is another chapter in the long story of photosynthesis, perhaps the subject of another video. But I'll let you in on a secret. Light is used to split water into oxygen and hydrogen. The oxygen is released to the atmosphere, and we absorb it with every breath we take. The hydrogen's going a long, long journey, too long to tell here, but it results in the production of two important molecules called ATP and NADPH. ATP contributes the phosphate caps to the carbon pathway we just talked about, whereas NADPH contributes the hydrogens. ATP and NADPH are consumed in the synthesis part of photosynthesis and replenished in the photo part. The end result, carbon dioxide is scavenged from the atmosphere and used to build essentially all of the complex structures that make up the body of a tree. What would you say to someone who told you that the weight of the tree came mostly from the carbon dioxide in the air? I said that's very disturbing and um, wonder how that could happen.